Hey everyone, Brennan from Brinkley RV here. I want to thank you for the purchase of your new Brinkley RV. I'm going to be giving you a quick walkthrough of the Model Z behind me. Some of the features I'm going to show you will vary depending on floor plan. And if you want any more in-depth videos, you can find that on the Owner's Hub on our website. So just by your door side baggage door, underneath your skirt metal, you have your LP Quick Connect. And then just on the inside, you have your satellite coax to the left, your outlet. Uh, just to the left of that, you have your underbody lights and your pass-through light switch. And then just below, you have the controller for your exterior speakers. In this bag is gonna be all the directions to pair your phone. And then just to the right is your hot and cold water hookup. Just to the right are your sliding pass-through access doors that are removable, so if you do need to get back there, you do have access. Your converter is back there as well, which basically turns your shore power into 12 volt to charge your batteries. If you are having an issue with that, there are two fuses on that. That would be a great spot to check. Your water pump is also back there, along with the shutoffs for your shower. So over here on the other side of the pass-through, this is going to be your crank for your manual override of your slide outs and to drop down your spare tire. And in between that is one of two battery disconnects. This is what we call road mode. So it's going to kill everything but your safety features, your solar, your jacks, and your refrigerator. And the easy way to tell which one this is is that the battery disconnect here is located a lot further from the battery. The one a lot closer is going to be your kills all, which we'll talk about. So here in your LP compartment, the Model Z is going to come with two 30-pound tanks, one here, one on the other side. You can fit 40s, and in a pinch, you can fit a 20-pound tank as well. That's why this bottom strap is so low. Your tanks do come equipped with LPIQ. It's a really simple method to be able to see how much LP you have left in your tank. To open and close, super simple. And then over to the right-hand side here, you will see your leveling jacks, one here, one on the other side. You do have nice, easy access to the manual override up top. You just have a socket on there and you can crank it up or down. So up front, the Model Z is gonna come with the Rhino Box fifth wheel hitch. Over to the side is gonna be your breakaway switch. Your main disconnect does have to be on for this to work and you wanna make sure that this is hooked up to your truck. So if anything were to happen, comes off the hitch, this is gonna lock up your brakes uh, if it pulls away. So on the backhand side here is gonna be your seven way connector. Uh, you want again, you wanna make sure this is plugged in. This is gonna control your brake lights, your brakes, uh, and then your backup camera will be powered off this as well. Up front in your bulkhead storage here, we'll open your baggage door and you have two latches up here to hold your baggage door open. Now once we're in here, on the left hand side we have our battery box that is recessed and it's big enough for two Group 27 batteries. Uh, and then on top are your positive and negative connections as well to make accessing that super easily. Up top you'll see the big positive going to your second battery disconnect and that's going to be your kill all or storage mode to make sure everything's wiped out when you do put it in storage. Over to the right hand side is going to be your 50 amp MPPT charge controller. That's gonna be run off your solar. Right here is gonna be your battery selection. So if you have AGM, you wanna select AGM. Lithium, you wanna select lithium, super simple. So up here is gonna be the brain for your TST tire pressure monitoring system. It is banded. If this light is off and you're having any issues, you can take this cover off and your mini breaker bars behind that. Just make sure all your connections are nice and tight. Up above it is gonna be our inverter prep. So we have our 12 volt wires, the area for your T-fuse, and then over here is your 110 loop that will actually get fastened into the inverter. And on the left hand side is where those two plugs are actually gonna connect into to make your inverter work properly. If you need any more in-depth videos on the inverter itself, you can go to our owner's hub. It'll give you a nice walkthrough of how exactly to install that inverter. On the right hand side is our generator accessory wiring. So we're gonna give you the wiring to hook up a generator. You would have to add the gen box, the gas lines, and the exhaust. Uh, but we gave you the wiring, which is a, a big tough part. Over here is going to be the brain for your slim rack slide mechanism for your bed slide. And if you look closely, it'll show you all the fault codes and all the flashing numbers. So if you are having an issue with your bed slide, you can come in here, you can count the amount of flashes, and basically it'll be super easy to troubleshoot. Just above that is going to be the brain for our leveling system. So if you're having any issues, uh, with something not working, you have four 30 amp fuses. This is a great spot to check to make sure that all your fuses are live, make sure all your connections are tight, um, but that will be the brain for your auto level. 
So that's going to sum up the bulkhead storage. If you guys have any questions, uh, want more in-depth videos on how to install or troubleshoot, you can go ahead and go onto our owner's hub and it'll give you a nice walkthrough on how to operate and troubleshoot anything in this bulkhead storage. All right, so as we come over to the other side here, I want to point out our two labels here. This is going to show you your weights. Uh, it's going to give you tire specifications, tire pressures, and if you want to learn more about chalking your wheels, torquing your wheels, anything related to your wheels and tires, you can go in your owner's manual. There will be a certain section along with our owner's hub. We'll walk you through all those processes as well. Into the LP baggage door here, you have your second 30 pound tank. Again, you can add a 20 if you get in a pinch. You forget to fill your LP tanks, go down to the gas station. You can uh, go ahead and fit that right in here. Um, here is your two stage LP regulator. Uh, so right now we're pointed to the right, so that's going to be your door side tank. If you turn this to the left, it's going to be this tank here. Uh, right now the label is red, so that means that there's no LP in the lines. As soon as you fill a tank, turn it on, that's going to actually go to black, which is going to notify you that there now is LP in the lines. Up front is going to be your other jack leg as well, and again, you have a nice easy manual override, and you can find that video on the owner hub as well. So in your off-door side pass-through, you have your leveling screen here. Uh, so once you get to your campground, you're ready to level out your unit. You're going to go up front, pull the pin on your two front legs, drop them to your desired height or the ground. So you're going to power the screen on, and then you're going to just press the front button. This is going to raise the front end so you're able to pull away from the front. So you get it to the right height, you pull your truck away, close everything up. All you're going to do is press auto level. It is going to drop down the rear legs, take the front to a leveled height. It's going to be good to go. You don't have to do anything from there, just power the screen off. Once you're done, ready to head home or to your next campsite, you're going to power the screen on and all you're going to do is press left and right. This is going to retract the rear jacks and take the front end to the same exact height that you pulled your truck away from originally. So it's called hitch memory. It's going to make your life super easy. Once you are hooked up, you're going to go ahead and press retract all. That is going to raise all the jacks to the right height all the way up and then you're good to go. So just on the inside of the baggage door, you do have all the instructions for that control panel. You also can utilize the app on your phone, the one control to level it if you're up front. Uh, and you also can utilize the owner's hub if you do have any more questions about your auto level. All right, so on your utility center up top, you're going to have your two dump valves, your gray on the left, black on the right. You do have a five amp resettable fuse. And if something were to happen on your underbelly, you have a hatch you can drop down and it's gonna give you direct access to actually manual override your valve, so super simple. Down below, you're gonna have your hot and cold outdoor shower, satellite, cable, and aux to your bedroom right here. And just below it are your five controls for the different settings you're wanting, wanting to do camp-wise. So depending on what you're wanting to do, the picture is going to show you exactly where to put the knobs and there is a nice in-depth video on our owner's hub on how to operate it uh, to get it to exactly the settings you want. Below is our city water inlet uh, which is basically going to fill your fresh tank or you can utilize this just to pull from city water. Over to the right hand side is going to be your black tank flush. So we actually have three types of tanks. You have your fresh, you have your gray, and you have your black. So your grays are going to be your shower, your sink, your washer dryer, your black is going to be your waste, and then your fresh obviously is going to be the fresh water for your sinks and your shower. Uh, connected to it is our 65 foot hose, which is retractable, pulls out so you don't have to wind up a hose anymore. If something were to happen, you do have easy access to it. If you pull off this wall, you can replace it, you can rewind it, whatever you need to do. So just off to the side, you have your 110 outlet, and then directly below is a QR code that you can scan with your phone, which is gonna take you to our owner's hub. And basically it'll have detailed videos of how exactly to operate our utility center. And then down below in our saddle bag, you would turn this rotator, you take this to hook up to city water, you can actually run that out of the bottom so you can keep your baggage door closed. Right here is your Furion on-demand hot water heater and the controller for that is in the bathroom. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, over to the right is gonna be your furnace and these exhaust vents here, you wanna make sure that these are clean before you go ahead and use your hot water heater and your furnace so you're good to go. To the right is gonna be your 50 amp connection. Down below, is your single point for terminating your black and your gray tanks and then to the right is going to be your sewage hose holder. So I'm going to be showing you how to hook up the 50 amp power cord. It is stored in your front bulkhead storage. So I got it on the ground here. I'm going to go ahead and unwind it 
take this end that's going to go into your unit and before you plug it in make sure you completely unwind the cord you'll pop open the cover of your 50 amp and you'll see these little knobs right on there so you'll find your locator pop it in there and you are going to rotate it to the right and then twist your locking cap on good to go then you'll take the other end go to your 50 amp hookup plug it in and you should be good to go so before you run your slide outs in you want to make sure that your side walls are clean your wiper seals are clean, uh, there's no obstructions on your roof, make sure there's no sticks, anything, get up there, wipe it off. Cleaning your wiper seals, you can use soapy water, uh, same with your slide out end walls, making sure those are nice and clean. And now coming back, on your fender skirt here, you can see a cutout. This is gonna be access to manually override your door side slide out. You'll have two more accesses over there, one for this slide, and then to drop your spare tire down. The crank to manually override these is actually in your pass-through, is over by your second battery disconnect. So now that we made it to the back of the coach, we have a rear storage on this model, and that is gonna vary depending on the floor plan, but on the 3100, it does have it. Just below, we have our two inch receiver hitch. It's rated for 300 pounds carry and 3000 pounds towing. And you have your floor way flat here that you can use to hook up to a trailer or a bike rack that has lights. Off to the right, you have your ladder to access the roof. It is rated for 250 pounds. Uh, so this is going to allow you to get up there, check your seals, check your vents, just make sure everything's good to go before you start your trip. So up top you'll have your Furion backup camera. It's powered by your battery and your 7-way when you're hooked up to the truck. And it does come with a 7-inch screen that you can put in the cab of your truck so you can view what's going on going down the road. So as I mentioned on the other side for the manual overrides, this one is going to be for the override for your off-door side slide out. And then this cutout will be to drop down your spare tire. For any in-depth videos of how to override your slides or drop your spare tire down, you can go ahead and find that on our owner's hub on the website. All right, so now that we made it to your campsite, I have one of our awnings out. You can use your smart control center to operate it or the app on your phone. Uh, we got it out, I'll show you how to tilt it. You're gonna pull the leg down and then you're gonna tighten that screw. So if it's sprinkling, the water's gonna roll off one side, not pool up in the middle. When it comes to running them in, make sure they're clean dry and then you're good to go and retract them. If it's a windy day and your awning is flapping up and down, make sure to retract your awning so you don't have to worry about any issues. So here at the entrance door, you'll see you do have keyless entry. It'll come with redundant keys as well so you can utilize that. It will come preset with a code that you can find in our manual and you can change it to whatever it is you desire. On the inside, you have your screen defender, your screenshot, and your screen assist along with the blackout shade on the door. On the inside, we will go ahead and fold out your axis steps, flip down the steps, you're good to go in. And the handrail, it is pinned for transit, you got to make sure uh, that you do that. Pop it out and you're good to go. And this pin can store in one of the drawers on the inside. So on the entrance steps, your legs are adjustable. So depending on the elevation, you can pull this pin, you can extend or retract the legs on your steps. Now let's go in and check out the inside. So behind this door, just as you walk into the entrance door, is going to be your smart command center. Uh, so this is going to show you your tank levels, your battery percentage, uh, along with a handful of lights, awning, ceiling, scare, water pump, tank heater. Down below are going to be your awning controls and then your slide controls as well. So just below that, you have another QR code, which is going to again take you to the owner's hub and walk you through videos pertaining everything in this area. Uh, below you have your dimmer switch for the main living room area. Off to the right is going to be your max air fan controller which is directly above your stove. And then your battery monitor here which is going to tell you your percentage and then the voltage of your battery as well. So inside the door here you have the sticker for our safe ride 24-7 roadside assistance. Call that number, it'll basically walk you through everything. Just below is going to be the pairing codes for your speakers. And for the inside one there's nothing you have to turn on. It's going to just show up in your Bluetooth settings as BRV, Z, and then the last four of your VIN. All right, so here in your dinette slide, depending on our floor plans, you may have a four-person dinette like this, maybe a booth. Right now, we just have the dinette. So you have your ottoman over here, which is removable. Right now, we have it strapped for the road mode, which we will give you a closer look on. Your backrest is just magnetized to the wall, so it's easily removable. On the window, to open, it is just the crank located on the bottom side, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Your screens, your bug screen will pull up from the bottom. Your blackout is going to come from the top and it is reflective foiled on the backhand side so if it's a really hot day, make sure to pull these down, help to keep it cool in here. 
and they do magnetize together. So if you want half and half, you do that, you have that option as well. So here you have your two dinette chairs that are in road mode. You're gonna take this right one, put the leg into the bracket on the sidewall, and then you're gonna actually strap the two chairs together. So now they're fastened down, you don't have to worry about them moving going down the road. So here in your theater seats, you have your heat, you have USB on the inside of the arm, you have your lever to release the legs and then you can recline. You have your phone charger here. It, all, it is also waterproof, so you can set a drink in it. You also have storage under the center section as well. In the rear, you have two end tables. You have storage in the front. If you press down on the back side, you do have outlets that pop up. You do have a tri-fold sofa here, and you can reference our owner's hub, which has a nice video on how exactly to fold this thing out. Behind us, we have an egress window, and you will have a few of these in your coach. Once we get to the bedroom, I'll show you how this operates. So over here in the entertainment area, this layout will vary depending on floor plan, um, but we have a televator here, and the switch is usually located under a nearby cabinet. You can see it's coming up. Uh, just above it, you have an entertainment shelf. Off to the left-hand side, you have HDMI, coax hookup, and then an outlet for anything you would want to hook up behind it. Uh, you have a fireplace located down below. There will be a nice remote in your owner's bag that you can utilize this from the sofa. All right, so here in your residential kitchen, you're gonna have your two pull-out trash cans here with your paper towel holder. Off to the right, you're gonna have your residential microwave and the glass plate in there does need to be fastened down before you hit the road, whether that's in a cabinet drawer or you tape it down somewhere in the microwave. Below, you have your stove top and your oven. You wanna make sure you purge the lines before you use this thing. Um, so you filled it up fresh with LP, purge the lines, you should be good to go. Um, back here, you're gonna have your built-in spice rack. And if you don't wanna utilize this, you just pull it up, it is easily removable, and then you have a nice big open cabinet for you to use. Under the sink, you will see that there are two shutoff valves, and those are gonna be located at every fixture. So your kitchen sink, your toilet, your bathroom sink, you'll see the ones in the pass-through uh, basement for your shower, and then along with your washer dryer. So it's nice, good look under there for that. So here on your reefer, up top, you will see your travel lock, which you can twist off. And then you have a conveniently located magnet just inside the cabinet to the left of the refrigerator. Don't have to worry about losing it. Uh, to power this thing on, you're gonna hold the function button for about five to 10 seconds. Uh, and then for any other function questions, there's a sticker on the inside of the right-hand door. You can also reference our owner's hub. Again, there will be a nice long video walking through all the functions of your refrigerator. So here in the pantry, you have your shelves that are fully adjustable. You remove the fastener on each side and you can move it up or down on the bracket. There is a nice video to show you how exactly to do it. You have an outlet in the center and then down below is gonna be a white rotator. That's gonna be access to an inch and a half wire chase from your roof down into your basement. So if you wanna add solar, dish, you have a nice conduit from the roof to the basement. You don't have to make any cuts. The location of that rotator and the chase will vary depending on floor plan, but on the 3100, it is under the bottom shelf. So here in your hutch, if you open these two drawers, it'll be a handful of different accessories for your unit. So your backup camera screen for your truck, your TST tire pressure monitoring system screen, a few extra brackets for your wardrobe drawer, and then the remote for your fireplace. And the cabinet below, is gonna be your owner's bag, which is gonna have a handful of remotes, different instructions for the appliances inside your unit, uh, along with your owner's manual and warranty guide. All right, so on your hutch lower here, usually your fuses are gonna be located somewhere centrally in the unit. On the 3100, they are here. These are your 12 volt fuses right there. So if you're having an issue with anything that runs on 12 volt, be sure to check your fuses there. And then your 110 breakers are located just to the right. So if you're having an issue with anything 110, make sure your breakers aren't tripped. Again, centrally located is gonna be a fire extinguisher as well on the 3100. It's just to the left-hand side of your entrance door. All right, so here in your bathroom, you have your toilet paper holder that is actually magnetized to the wall. So for transit, make sure it is good to go. On the right-hand side of your toilet, you have that shutoff valve again, like you saw in the kitchen. In your linen closet, you'll see this screen here, and this is for your on-demand hot water heater. It's super simple. On the right hand side, you'll press on. You have an option below for Fahrenheit or Celsius, and then you have up and down on the left hand side so you can select your desired temperature. So a travel lock for your shower door, super simple. You can lock it here or on the other side. I'm gonna show you here for video purposes, but you get it all to one side, and now your shower door is locked in ready for transit. So above your sink, 
you have a recessed vanity, you have a towel holder. So here you have the GFI outlet in the bathroom. If some of the outlets in your coach aren't working, make sure to come in here to the bathroom and make sure that this isn't tripped. If it is, reset it, you should be good to go. Off to the right hand side is the max air fan controller and it is a rain sensor. So if it is starting to sprinkle, it'll notice it and automatically close the vent for you. Uh, and then again, under the sink, you have those same shutoffs you saw on the toilet and under the kitchen sink. All right, so just inside the door is the thermostat controller for your main air conditioner. To power it on, you're gonna hold the power slash mode button. We currently have it set at cool and to change the mode, you're gonna just press the power button once. Now we're on heat. And to get the furnace to work, you wanna make sure the fan speed is on off. Otherwise, your fan's gonna be running along with your furnace. To go to the next mode, press it again. Now that's our fan. You can change the speed by the fan button. Now we're high, low, high again. Change the mode dry, that's a dehumidifying mode. And to change your desired interior temp, you have your up button. And on the right hand side, you have your lower button. And to power it back off, hold the power button, and you're good to go. So now that we've made it into the bedroom, just as you walk through the door, you're gonna have your second thermostat for your bedroom air conditioner. Functions just as the same as the one as I showed you. Uh, and then just below it is the light switch for the bedroom, and it is on a dimmer switch, so you can brighten and dim the bedroom. So above your bedroom TV is just gonna be your antenna booster. Uh, if you're having issues with that, you can drop that cover down, make sure all your connections are tight. Uh, if you're hooked up to satellite or cable, you want to make sure that that booster is off. To the right hand side is going to be your coax and then power for your TV as well. If you need to remove the TV and access any of that, there is a pin on the back hand side. You pop it up and the bracket will slide to the right and off comes the TV. So below it is your second egress window and to how to open it, you release those two tabs that will pop in. You can either lock it there or these will actually go all the way out in case you need to escape. Um, for any escape plans and safety items, you can find that in your owner's manual. Bring it back in, pop it in, boom, you're good to go. So in your top wardrobe here for your stackable washer dryer prep, that is your rotator behind is access for your dryer vent. Two outlets are for your washer and your dryer. Below you have your hot hookup, your cold hookup, and then your drain for your washer. To install, you do need to remove these shelves and this style does have to come out. It can be reinstalled once the washer and dryer are in place. So behind this very lower drawer in your dresser is gonna be the wireless P-trap for your washer dryer. So if you have a clog, you need to run a snake through, that wireless P-trap is just hand tight so you can remove it, run your snake through and get the clog out. So the light switch here is gonna be for your under bed lights. It's a three-way switch. So you have on, off, and then you can utilize the motion sensors as well. Okay, so under your mattress here, you will have under bed storage as well. It has your comforter and pillows as well. In the front wardrobe here on the right hand side, you have the switch for your lighted closet rod. And on the far left, you're gonna have cordless vac prep. So there's an outlet there and a backer in the wall so you can easily fasten a cordless vacuum. The easiest way to find the backer is just to use a small magnet and wherever you feel it pulling towards the wall, you know there's a backer there. So pairing your phone to the One Control is really simple. You'll download One Control app from your Android or Apple App Store. You can either go on there and scan this QR code or press the connect button. It'll show up uh, on the list of devices. You'll press pair and it'll basically take you through the steps on how exactly to pair your phone to the unit. So if the QR code doesn't read or the connect button, you can manually type in the device name here and the password there on the sticker just below your control panel. If you scan this QR code, again, there is a very in-depth video on our owner's hub of all the processes walking you through how to pair your phone. So as we're wrapping up here, I just wanna point out a few general maintenance things. One, the roof, get up there, inspect your seals, clean with soapy water, uh, again with your slide box roofs and your awnings. We just wanna make sure that's clean and you guys don't have anything to worry about. On the inside here, before you hit the road, we wanna make sure that your reefer's locked, the glass plate in your microwave is stored somewhere where it can't, doesn't have a chance to break, uh, your ottoman and your dinette chairs are fastened down, in the bathroom that your glass doors are locked, your toilet paper holder is magneted to the wall, and then in your bedroom that your wardrobe doors are shut and locked. So for any how-tos, maintenance, and any additional information, you'll be able to find it in your owner's manual or our owner's hub on the website. And I just wanna thank you guys again for the purchase of your Brinkley RV.